we're, we're talking about how far will a man go or how far will you go. And I want to talk to you a few minutes this morning uh, about our faith, about our thinking, and about our faith. But I want us to read this here. This is the uh, Amplified Version. It says, Therefore become imitators of God, copy Him and follow His example. As well beloved children, what is this here? Imitate their father. Do y'all, do y'all get this this morning? We're, sh- we're supposed to be imitators of God. We should act like God. Okay? I'm going to give you some other scriptures here. If you would turn to 1 Peter chapter 5. I want Zach just to leave that up there for me because I'm going to try to come back to some of that. 1 Peter chapter 5. Starting in verse 6. When you get there, say amen. Or not quite. (laughs) First Peter 5. Starting in verse 6. Everybody there. Listen to what it says. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Okay, what we've got to do, we've got to learn to live under the mighty hand of God. You know, sometimes we, we live out of our privileges because we're not living under the mighty hand of God. We're not living under the influence of God. And that's why I wanted this, this message, this uh, passage of Scripture here this morning imitators when we when you uh, I, I, I say it like this I notice Joseph when me and Joseph is around each other just say all day long we go somewhere or something by the end of the day Joseph's talking like me he's conducting himself you know like me the more we stay around each other he's my son but when we hang out I see more of it y'all get what I'm saying when you hang out with God, you begin to imitate Him more. Okay? And this passive scripture here, I want us to understand this right here, that He may exalt you in due time. The mighty hand of God, He is going to, y'all, y'all underline this latter part, He is going to exalt you. He is going to move you into the place of blessings. Amen. I'm telling you, He's going to move you into that place. Amen. Woo, praise God. I feel this right here. Can I, can I give you something right here? Talking about, it, and he will exalt you in due time. Listen to what it says. Proclaims the route to the blessings of God. In other words, you got to claim the blessings to receive the blessings. In other words, when you speak those things, you get yourself in root of the blessings. Okay? What is the root of the blessings? Obeying the word of God. Okay, let me move on with it. Verse 7, cast all your cares upon him. How many's got cares this morning? How many's got situations this morning? What he's saying right there, release those things and let me handle it. Okay? Uh, How many's ever had somebody, uh, you having a situation and they they come to you and they say, uh, Amy, I'll handle it. Just don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Just... You know, I, I got it under control. I know what I'm, and, and this is what I want to throw in here. And that person, you you might say, I know what I'm doing. Just You just let me handle it. What he's saying right here, if we will cast our cares upon him, he knows what to do with them. But I, I want you to, I'm, I'm trying to give you something here this morning. When you cast your cares on him, that's releasing it. Not holding on. Don't withhold anything. Release it all to him. What you're doing, you're exercising your faith to him saying, okay, God, I'm going to let you take care of it. In other words, when you release it, you, you turn it over to him, you walk off and say, hey, it's done. It's took care of. Amen? The next verse. Be sober. Be sober. 
We're talking about some minds this morning. I'm going to get to that just in, just in a minute. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. All right? It don't say is a roaring lion. It says as a roaring lion. He acts like a lion. He tries to roar, but, you know, his roar is not much. Why? Because I'm under the mighty hand of God. And I've done gave it to God so he can huff and puff and he can do whatever he wants to. He's a toothless old lion. Okay? But it says, adversary of the devil. I want you to understand, the enemy comes against you in all kinds of ways trying to devour you. But listen to what it says. As a roaring lion walks about. He didn't say runs. He walks about seeking whom he may devour. But now this next verse. I want you to get this right here. Whom the devil resists steadfast in the what? In the faith. We got to have faith to move mountains. We got to have faith to trust that God is going to take care of it. There's two things. I got faith to believe God, but I got to also have the backup faith to believe that He will take care of it. Rele- in other words, releasing it to Him, okay? I'm just laying something out here now. Knowing that the same afflictions are compassed in your brethren who are in the world. The devil don't just come against me. He comes against Sister Tony. He comes against Nana. I can name everybody. He don't just pick one or two and say... I'm going to get you. I ain't worried about the rest of them. I'm going I'm to center in on you. I'm going to focus in on you. I'm going to get, no. He's not centering on you. He's centering on the body of Christ. What are you, what are you talking about, Brother David? We are, are the body of Christ. We all fit together like a body. We have a mind. We have shoulders. We have arms. We have legs. We have hearts. See, he wants to, 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 to destroy the whole body, not just part of the body. Because let me tell you one thing. If you lose a, a leg, okay, you lose a leg, you're, you're going to have to have some kind of helps to get you around. Am I right? And I'm not talking about a wheelchair because don't lay, lay down and, and despair. Woe is me. But what you've got to do is say, hey, by faith now, I'm in the mighty hand of God. What's going on? I'm in the mighty hand of God and He is going to take care of it. He is going to see the overpowering of God. Hallelujah. It's going to come on the scene and it's going to take control. Why? Because I cast it upon Him. I related it to Him. Oh, I can't do it. But He can. Are you human? Yes. But also we're spirit. Okay? Let's go to 1 John. First John chapter 3. I'm laying a lot of things down here this morning. 1 John chapter 3. Verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He who does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He who commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Now, I want you, the latter part of this is what I want you to get this morning. For this purpose, for what purpose? For your purpose, whatever you're facing. I want this to, to get in your spirit this morning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy 
the works of the devil. Woo! Praise God. I'm talking about his son came to destroy the works of the devil. No matter what it is, he said, Jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil. Mm. Y'all ought to shout about that. Y'all calm down. Y'all getting too excited here. Y'all better just calm down a little bit. But now listen, listen to this here. I want this to, to really get in your spirit. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for, he is, for his seed remain in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In other words, I'm not talking about making a mistake. I'm talking about practicing sin. What he's talking about, if you're born again, you're not going to practice sin no longer. You're going to do away with sin. Let me tell you one thing. I, I used myself when I was in the world and before I got saved, I, I was an alcoholic. But when I got saved, I got rid of the evidence. Do y'all get what I'm saying? I didn't practice sinning. Why? Because I'd done away with things that would cause me to sin. Y'all ought to shout about that. We need to get rid of some things that causes us to sin. And then you, what you're doing right there, you're drawing the line. You're presenting your bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. He's done, done his part. Brother Tex, what is he saying? Now I want you to relate to me and get rid of those things. Quit practicing those things. Some of you that are here, myself, when we was in the world, we had habits. We practiced them habits. We did them habits every 10 minutes, every night, or whatever, you know, whatever it was, we did it. Why? And, and we did it continuously. What you did, you practiced it every day. But now that you're born again, there's a new man there, and you don't, when you get around that, or you may slip and do something like that, you say, I ought not do that. I shouldn't have done that. How many, come on, y'all, be honest with me. I mean, hey, we're working for perfection, okay? And what we're working for to do this right here, therefore become imitators. We need to start imitating what the Word says instead of what the world says, okay? We need to, the Bible says if you draw nigh to Him, he will draw nigh to you, okay? So what we got to do, we got to come to this right here, imitate him, and I like this part right here. Copy him and follow his what? Examples. We got we to gotta, we gotta get in this word, and we got to get enough of the word in us, we start acting like him, and we're, we're copywriters. When they see me, they see Jesus, Okay? How many knows that it's against the law for you to copyright something without the right legal uh, documents or whatever? Me and Amy's talked about some of this here and some of the singing and different stuff. But in anything, if you do something illegal, Sister Pam can uh, probably explain a little bit of this. If you try to do something, transfer some land or something illegal, in the long run, it ain't no good. And somebody's going to get their hand slapped. And a little more than that. <laughs> but what we're doing, it's legal. Why? Because we're born again now. We got to do what? We got to copy him and follow his example as well beloved children. We're his children now. And what we got to do, we got to imitate our father. I'm, I'm going to give you something right here. All right, imitating the Father, what did the Father do? He loved us enough, He gave His Son for us. What are we willing to give? You, you get what I'm saying? Fill in the blank. What are you willing to give for Him? Okay? I want to give you some. All right, let's go back to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy this morning. Second Timothy chapter one. Verse 
verse 7. We read this last, last week, but I want to I pick it back up. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. We talked about that last week. If you did, you wasn't here, look on uh, uh, the, uh, our Facebook and everything. You can get it. Is it today, Zach? Did it be coming out? It's already out. Thank God, Zach. Don't waste no time. It's already out. Okay? Look on it. You can get last Sunday morning for you that was working and out of town and different things. But listen to what it said right here. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This is where I want to pick up this morning is a sound mind. Okay? I want to give you just a few things right here. Sound mind. Uh, passion uh, gives the example of this right here. Gives our mighty power to love and self-control. You know what? We gotta have, if we got a, a sound mind, you got to be in control of your mind. Okay? A sound mind, in other words, that's why I read a while ago, be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Because the adversary, he is walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. See, what I'm trying to tell you right now, you got a sound mind. You got power in your mind. You, if you want to resist something, what do you do? You tell it no. Okay? Uh, the other day, Teresa came home. She brought me some lunch. I was there working on a truck, and uh, 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 Ashley was eating pizza and everything, and I didn't want pizza, and so she had brought me some lunch in, and uh, she got some of my French fries, and uh, I, I was eating some of them, and she done ate all her. She didn't get but two or three. And I said, here, baby, here's some more. I don't want all these. She said, I don't need them. I said, well, it ain't but two or three. In other words, she said, don't you hear me? I don't want them. What that's doing right there is resisting. I do not need it. Okay, what we got to do on the sound mind, we got to tell the devil, I know who I am. Okay, I know who I am, and I know in whom I believe in. God is the author and the finisher of my faith. I got faith now. Why? Because I'm in the mighty hand of God. Woo, y'all got to get this. I walk in the mighty hand of God. I'm imitating the power and the anointing of God. Why do you say this, Brother Dave? Because the Lord laid something on my heart last week and then again this morning. He gave us a confirmation, me and Sister Teresa. He said, where the word says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because He has anointed me to preach the gospel. Okay, what He did right there, He sent the anointing for Him to what? To speak boldly. The gospel will set you free. Not always says you can count on it, it's the gospel. Okay? But when we have that authority, okay, that anointing, listen to what I'm going to say, because Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because why? He has anointed me to set the captive free. Okay? When you get to setting people free, y'all going to shout when I tell you this, you're free yourself. You can't set somebody free if you ain't free. It's kind of like me and Sister Pam sitting in jail and say, I can get us out of here. Well, how can you get us out? Somebody open that door. Duh. But if I ain't got nobody that can open the door, listen to what I'm fixing to say. With the authority, we're going to stay there. But we have the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Why? Because He has anointed us to set the captive free. Woo! Y'all got to get this, man. I mean, this, this is strong right here. But listen, what it, I, I want to give you some things right here. Let's go, let's go to Isaiah 26. It's 12 o'clock, y'all. I'm sorry. The clock's still ticking. Let's, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple things. Isaiah 26. I like when people has a Bible and it turns and you hear that word coming alive. 26, starting in verse 3. 
you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is what? Grounded. Determined. Do y'all get what it's saying right here? Stayed. I, I didn't say stay, but it says I'll it stayed there. You stay there. How many has ever tried to train a dog to do something? It ain't very easy, is it? Sandra's got them. You others that's got dogs that are around the house. We had a little dog, and man, I didn't think we was going to ever get that thing trained. We worked with it, and I kicked it, and blessed it, and everything. Y'all, y'all don't laugh. Y'all probably done the same thing. <laughs> I'm going to give you away and everything. But finally, we, 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 we succeeded. Why? Because you've done what the Word says. We believe God, and, and I want you to understand this right here. you got to stay with the truth. Why? Because listen to what it says right here. You, you, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because why? He trusts in you. Trust ye the Lord. How long? How long are we going to trust the Lord? Forever. His mercy endures how long? Forever. Okay. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord... Now listen to this right here. Jehovah. Did y'all get that right there? What does Jehovah mean? That means provider. In other words, the one that says he'll take care of you. Okay, we move from mighty God that brought us into the place of the provider. Same God, but understand there's several, there's different names of God. But we come to this one right here. Somebody's fixing to get something. Jehovah is everlasting strength. I can't stand, Brother David. You just don't know. But you got an everlasting strength. You got an encouraging word from God. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or receive a begging from bread. God don't want us to go out here and have to beg and wonder how we're going to get by. We got to do one thing. We got to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Listen to this here. For, the, for in the Je Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Is, listen to what it says. Jehovah is the rock of ages. The un, let's see, the eternal strong one. He will not change or vary his directions. He don't change. He's the same today, yesterday, and what? Forever. He changes not. How many this morning, you don't have to raise your hand, but you say, Brother David, I need to get some strength. I, need, I just need to be strengthened. What you got to do, how do I get strength? You got to learn to trust him and believe that he can do what he says he can do. I'm going to stop with this right here, but I want to give you a word of testimony this morning. I woke up at 1.30 this morning. The devil attacked me. I'm talking about really bad. Teresa didn't even know. I got up and slipped out of the bed. I went downstairs. I actually, I laid on the floor. I was hurting so bad. I was believing God. I said, God, by your stripes, I'm healed. I began to speak to my body. What I had to do, I had to resist the devil, okay? Symptoms was there, Sister Pam, and they was real strong. I kept on. Two and a half hours, I prayed, I believe God, I prayed, I believe God. I would begin to feel a little bit better, and then all of a sudden it was like, man, the devil brought another wheelbarrow, and just kind of done like that. But you know what I did? I stood fast. I stood fast. I, I wasn't going to move. The symptoms had to go. How long, and this is what I want to add to this there, how long will we resist the devil? Or will we just give in? How long will we stand our ground and say, devil, not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit. And the word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And let me tell you one thing, I stood there, I laid there, I kneeled there on that floor in the downstairs 
And I said, devil, you're not going to defeat me. I'm going to stand on the word. I'm going to believe on the word. And I got up and I began to walk around. I said, symptoms, you got to fall off. Folks, I mean, I'm real. Hello? I walked around and I, I, I began to rebuke that and I began to feel better. And I said, man, I got this whip. I said, God, fight. man, God answered my prayer. I mean, I was just, yeah, I mean, I was excited. I got back upstairs, went back to bed. I was wide awake. All of a sudden, the pain came back. I said, devil, do you remember what happened a while ago? I said, God just took that pain away. I said, do I need to go back downstairs or are you just going to leave right here? This is what the devil said. Do you believe it'll leave? I said, it's gone. And right then, y'all, it's like it was just a plug just pulled. It just, boom, it was gone. I went back to sleep. Man, I slept like a rock. <laughs> but I'm telling you from something that you experience. And it don't matter if it, it, what the condition's in. The God that I called upon this morning is the same God that you call upon. You know, every one of us has situation, but I'm telling you here this morning, we got to do one thing. We got to trust in the Lord forever. Don't back up. Don't give up. I believe God is going to take care of it, and I'm trusting Him, and devil, you might as well get out of my way. I got to read you something else. Give me just a few minutes. Let's, let's turn to uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. This right here is going to help you. I was going to close with this, but the Lord said, no, you give this to, this is for somebody here this morning. Ephesians 4, starting in verse 22. When you get there, say amen, praise the Lord, shout now, something, whatever. Just give me a sign. Yeah, I want everybody there to, to, to visualize this word. Because faith come by hearing and hearing by what? The word. Sometimes you need to read the word. You need to see the word. Why? So it can get in your spirit. Listen to what verse 22 says. That you put off concerning the former conversation. The old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed. Come on y'all. You got to be renewed. You got to quit thinking the way you used to think. You got to change your thinking. Okay? And in any any kind of business or whatever, if you do in uh, one kind of business and then you go into a different kind of field, you got to you got to retrain everything. What you got to do, you got to have an open mind, a new mind saying, "Okay, I got to have a new mind. I got to receive these things. What I've got to do, I've got somebody going to teach me how to do it." Okay, and it goes back to this right here, imitators. Okay, now listen to this right here. This, this is good. And be renewed in, your, in the spirit of your mind. In other words, how are we acting? Are we acting fleshly? Are we acting spiritually? Why do you say this, Brother Dan? Because listen what the Scripture says right here. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renew in me, Lord, a clean heart and renew what? The right spirit that is within me. Give me just about five more minutes. I want to give you something right here. Remember when David failed, he, he, he really made a mistake and he went to God and he prayed that prayer. He said, God, Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. All right, listen to this. David didn't say, Lord, I lost my salvation. I need my salvation to give back to me. No, what it happened, he lost his mind. Why? Because he fell into the hands of lust. His mind, why? Because what did I preach on Wednesday night? Anybody remember what I preached on? Anybody? No, no. Opinions. Remember? 
an opportunity. See, the devil is taking opportunities that he can to disrupt your thinking. But you have the, the mind of Christ. You renewed... Somebody get this this morning because this is for you. You renew the spirit of your mind. Old things are past. It don't matter what happened years ago. I've changed. I'm believing something different. How many is ready for different? I want something different. Hallelujah. And that's how you get this right here and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put off the, the put on the new man, okay, the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Skip on over to chapter 6. Lord's wanting somebody to get something this morning. Chapter 6, verse 10. I know it says finally, and I'm not like Brother Tex was talking about this morning, I'm not adding to or taking away. But I'm going to give you my little illustration here, and it's not, it's about time, my brother. It's about time. Have you ever told anybody, it's about time you straightened up, or it's about time you've done that? I get that a lot at my wife. When we, she wants me to do something. The other day I got out there, man, I got in some points this week. Man, I tell you what, I got a lot of things done around the house. And ooh, she was smiling. <laughs> but finally, my brethren, it's about time, my brethren, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of what? Remember what I read a while ago? We're in the mighty hand of God. Listen to what it says right here. And in the power of His might. The power is at our disposal. If you want the power, it's there. It's at your disposal. Use it or don't use it. Okay? <laughs> when you go get in the shower, you just don't turn on the water and you get in there. You turn it on. Most people, they turn it on. They get the temperature just the way they want it. How many does that? All of us. You don't just turn it on and say, well, I'm going to get a hot shower and I turn it over there. Man, you get in there, woo you start backing up. Huh? All right, same way with cold water. You turn it on cold water. I'm going to take a chilling shower. You get in there, and it don't take long since the pain. You change your mind. Where's a little heat here to this water? <laughs> Around my house, when you got as many as stay in there like we do, you better get a shower real quick. <laughs> or before they all get there. <laughs> Amen. Because you might get one of those splash baths, that cold bath. Amen. But I want this to get in your spirit here. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I want to give you something right here. And I know I'm holding you just a little bit. I want to, I'm laying you something out for you to think on. Therefore, taking to you the whole armor of God. And the Lord gave me this yesterday afternoon. And I thought it was for another time. But the Lord this morning, he said, you got remember what I told you yesterday? And I was actually sitting there trying to equip myself the way this armor equips. And I was saying, you know, put it all on. Put it all, you know, and I was getting it all, you know, in my mind, I was getting it all on. And man, when I got through, man, I was a bad looking dude. I'm here to tell you this morning, you are bad. I ain't talking about mean bad, but you're bad to the bone. The devil knows you're bad to the bone. Why? Because when he looks at you, he don't see you, he sees Christ. Okay? I like what Amy said. She said something about the faces of God. You know, she was sharing that with us the other day. Let me tell you one thing. When the devil comes, when you're in the armor, when you're born again, the, the new spirit and everything, the devil don't see Sandra Anthony. He don't see Tex Bowell. He sees born again people. 
The imitators. Y'all got to get this. I can't get away from that. We got to be imitators. Whatever we going up against, we got to be godlike. Therefore put unto you the whole armor of God. Why? Why? Because of what you're facing? Because of what you're going to face. That you may be able to what? Withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore. I'm going to read these and I'm going to try to close. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with the truth. The truth of the cross. What the cross accomplished. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of Christ, which comes strictly by the by the, what He did through the cross. You can go back to Isaiah uh, and read some of that and Philippians. But verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Peace comes through the cross as well. And now listen to this right here. And above all, take the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith, now listen to this right here, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. What is this he's talking about? He's talking about faith. How many's got faith? You don't have to raise your hand, but I'm just saying, how many's got faith? When I was down on that floor this morning, man, I was I had pain. I and I'll be honest, I had more pain than I had faith. But I had to imitate. I had to let what I had inside the spirit of my what? Mind. I had to let it begin to speak to the circumstances. Brother David, you ain't, ha- you ain't got the circumstances I got. Let me tell you one thing. They ain't no big things or little things. They all what God can take care of. Can y'all shout amen? There's nothing that we face and that God cannot take care of. I want this to get in your spirit. Above all, take the shield. Above all, okay? Take the shield of faith. Okay, we got the shield of faith. But if we don't have the shield of faith, this next one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay? I want you to understand, you got to have the word of God. You cannot fight the enemy without the word. You can't do it. How many understands Isaiah said, by his stripes you are healed? Peter says, by his stripes you were healed. Are and were, it comes together, it's a done deal. Okay? But this here, let me, let me close with this right here. And take, I, I want this, this helmet of salvation. We got to understand the enemy right here, if we don't have the renewed of our minds, we don't have salvation. I'm sorry. Why? Because you got old material still there. What are you talking about? You got junk. How many, how many gets trash mail? Everybody. You get stuff in the mailbox, Sister Tony them Bass Pro Shop papers and them Academy papers, you need to throw them away, but text says, let me look and see what's in there, right? Come on. <laughs> Ladies, we get these shopping papers, Kay's Jeweler, Dillard's, and all these other things. We get this kind of stuff in the mail, and they got a sale going on. I didn't know they had a sale going on. They got a sale every day. <laughs> Amen. If you got the money, they'll sell it to you. <laughs> Praise God. But it says in, in this part right here, I want you to understand this. The salvation, the, the helmet of salvation. See, the devil wants to steal your salvation. What he does, he steals your word. And when he steals your word, what has he done? He's took away your salvation. But it comes to this last one. I know I've, I've gone, on, gone over my time, but I, this, is, this is valuable to somebody this morning. Because this right here, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I got the Word, and I got a circumstance, or I got a situation. How am I going to overcome this? 
I'm going to start speaking the end results. Okay? I don't mind using myself because, hey, I lived it. I had some things that happened to me that naturally I could never overcome. But I begin to speak the end results. The word says when man is impossible, but through God, all things are possible. Somebody ought to shout it right then. Somebody ought to say glory to God. Or somebody should have said, I received that. Do you understand? With man, it, it can be impossible. But with God, there is nothing impossible. As I laid down there this morning, so Teresa didn't know nothing about it. And after we got up this morning, I said, I was so sick this morning. I said, but I got, you know, and I started telling her what all went on. And she said, I wouldn't have never knew it. <laughs> Most of the time she does. She's, she's up. But I, I didn't want her. I didn't need her opinion. She's my wife. I love her. But I did, I, this, where's Javis at this morning? He's asleep. You know how we, how we overcome things? We fight the battle. How do we fight the battle? The sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. I apply the Word to the circumstance. I applied the Word this morning. I had pain, folks. Let me tell you one thing. I, had, I, was in, I, I can't explain how much pain I had. Sister Michelle working where she worked. There's a lot of people coming there and, and they say, I hurt. Where you hurt? Right here. Why do you hurt? I don't know. I just hurt. I mean, we don't know why, but we hurt. I had pain. But understand this. By his stripes, I was already healed. But I had to get my mind. I had to get my mind programmed like the Father. When Je Whew, I got so much right here. When Jesus was getting whipped, all of that striping and all that beating that he was taking, you know what it was? It was for that Sunday morning, David Dykes was laying down on the floor in his bathroom. What ailment was that? Don't worry about the ailment, but it was took care of. Y'all understand? No matter what the ailment is, it's already been taken care of. But Brother David, I'm hurting. I've got things. I've got situations. But let me tell you one thing. We all got things. We all suffer. And we all go through things. But I'm here to tell you, not by might nor by power, but it's by His Spirit. But I'm going to close with this. This is a promise. I'm going to close with this. Mm. Let me get away from this. It's powerful. It's just drawing. I want to close with this right here. Our mind, we got to have a clear mind. I'm going to come back next Sunday morning. I'm going to talk about the brain, the functions of the brain, what all, I mean, I'm not no doctor, no scientist or nothing, but I'm going to give you some statistics, some things that I've, I've studied up on this past week. And last night, I, I got Joseph. I picked his brain last night. He, I, he knows a lot of things about medical, and I was asking him. He was telling me all, this, all these words. I said, Joseph, this is daddy you're talking to. Okay, this is dead, you know. I can't even say them, much less write them down on paper. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But what I'm saying, the brain is important, the thinking. And now this is something, I'm, I'm going to close with this, and, and, but I want you to think about this. The brain is where things are stored. What is stored in your mind? What is stored in your mind, you can overcome or you can go with. Y'all understand? So I'm going to come back to this next Sunday morning. It, it, it's good. Because I, I've got a couple things that the Lord has just, this morning, just stirred in my spirit about our thinking. You know, what we do, we store up a lot of stuff that don't need to be there. How many's got a, a phone and you get on there and you say, man, I got so much, many people stored in here. Look at all these messages. And I've done talk to them about that. I'll delete it later. We get so much stuff in there. My phone the other day was telling me, you know, I had to get rid of some stuff or get a new phone in a roundabout way. I just had so much stuff in there. But stored, what have we got stored in our mind this morning? Would you stand with me?
I want you to know this morning, you have the mind of Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What you're doing right now, you're beginning to practice new things. You're different. And when you practice something, what do you do? Practice also as well means rehearsing. I'm rehearsing it over. I'm going to get this. They was talking about some cooking and different things here in our teaching earlier this morning. And if you're cooking something, you've got ingredients. Am I right? And if you don't go by the ingredients, it ain't going to be very good when it gets done. It might look good, but it ain't good. Okay? Because it don't have the full ingredients. You ladies, y'all, I'm not a cook. I can grill a hamburger and a steak and, you know, baked potato. I can live, you know. But all this other stuff, you got to add these ingredients. Teresa gets on to me when I go in the kitchen. She's cooking some kind of stew or something. I say, we need to add this, need to add that. She said, you need to get out of the kitchen. Okay? So, but what I'm saying, on our mind, on our restoring things in our mind, we need to have a clear mind this morning before we leave. I want us to have a clear mind. Father, I thank you this morning. I just, I speak to people here and I speak to their spiritual ears. Lord, that they allow the Holy Spirit to come in and begin to clear their minds with things that don't need to be there. Lord, remove it right now in the name of Jesus. It be gone. We don't have to wait till later. Right now, it's done. These things are removing themselves from your thinking, from your mind. Okay, Lord, now you said when we remove these things and we allow you to take these away, you would renew the spirit of our mind. The thinking, how we should think and how we going to think, Lord, renew that right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let us fill our minds with the word, the word of truth that sets, thank you, yes, Lord, that sets the captive free. Some of you this morning is going to get free. Why? Because we're, the Spirit of the Lord is going to move in. He's going to set the captive free. Oh, hallelujah. I feel this in my spirit this morning. Setting the captive free. And your mind, your mind is getting free. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. But let the, let the spirit man be free as well. Begin to imitate God. Begin to imitate the things that he says. Lord, let these things come to pass. Lord, let, let these people renew the spirit of their minds this morning. Lord, in creating them, Lord, not in the loss of their salvation, but Lord, creating them the clean heart. Clean. We're clean this morning. The devil has no authority. We remove everything that the enemy has tried to bring in there. The lust, the, the disappointment, the, all the frustration and different things that has been taught to us and been told to us. Remove those things right now, Lord, and renew the right spirit. We're going to think on these things, on your word now, Lord. We're going to take the whole armor of God and we're going to put it on. Why are we going to put it on? Because we're not going to allow the devil to come back and bring any of that garbage back in. Oh, praise you, Lord. Y'all got to receive that this morning. Not allow the enemy to come back and bring in that garbage back in. Praise God. Father, I thank you this morning. Bless everyone here, every home representative, Lord. And we ask it in your mighty name this morning. It's done. What we have this morning, Lord, we cast our cares upon you. You do care. You will care. And you're going to see us through. Lord, that's speaking the end results. We're speaking the faith of God right now. In Jesus' name, we praise you. And your, your name is worthy to be praised. You are the beginning. You are the end. You're the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.